Hi there, and welcome to the new user primer for Modern Tribe's Eventbrite Tickets add-on. I'm Rob from Modern Tribe, and on behalf of the whole team, I want to thank you for your support and for your purchase of this plugin. Over the course of a few screencasts, I'm going to walk you through how to use the plugin in this new user primer. But in the first one here, we're going to go through just the basics of getting the plugin installed, getting it activated, and getting your license key hooked in, as well as getting your Eventbrite API user key in place, which is required for this plugin to work. Here we are on the dashboard of my site, and I'm going to caution that I'm assuming by this point you've already completed purchasing the Eventbrite tickets add-on from the Tribe website and have downloaded it somewhere on your computer where it's easily accessible. From the dashboard, I'm going to come into Plugins and into Add New, and I'll select Upload. I'll pick the file wherever it's located on my computer and hit Install Now. And after it finishes working and says Plugin Installed Successfully, I'll just hit Activate Plugin. That turns it on and I see this yellow message telling me that it's on, but up above I have this red message telling me that until I actually install the core product that this is meant to extend, I can't use this extension. Basically, you have Eventbrite tickets in place, but it doesn't know what to extend. Make sure you get the latest version of the events calendar. If you don't have it, go download it from the wordpress.org repo. Otherwise, if it's installed but not active, as is the case in my scenario here, just go down and activate it. The latest stable version at the time this video is being recorded is version 2.0.11, so I know that I've got it and I just want to hit activate here. And the red message is replaced by another yellow message that says welcome to the events calendar. Great. Let's go ahead and plug in our license now. To do that, I'm going to head over to events and into settings. Then I'm going to hit the licenses tab. Now before I go much further, I should note that even if you don't have a license plugged in, as long as you have your Eventbrite API user key, the plugin is going to work 100%. You're not going to lose any functionality without a license key in place. But you won't have access to support if you ever need to go to the forums and have our team help you out. And you're not going to have access to upgrades, which means whenever there's a new build released, which is generally on a monthly basis, you're not going to be able to get it. If you have a license key and you've purchased one, there's no reason not to plug it in, especially when you see how easy it is. So let's go grab it from the Tribe website. Here I am over on the Tribe website, and I'm logged in with the credentials that I set up during the checkout process. I'm going to go into Account Central, and I'm going to go into License Keys. I'll find an available license key for Eventbrite tickets. It looks like I have one here. It's used on two sites, but it's available for three, so I do have this third one. What I'll do in this scenario is just copy the entire string that makes up the license itself, go back over to the back end of my site, and plug that string in. I'll tab out of it, let it work for a second to validate the key, and when I get this green message that says Valid Key with an expiration date, I know I'm in good shape. If I saw a red message that said invalid key or expired key, that'd be cause for concern and I would need to follow up to make sure that got sorted. But when you have a valid key message like this, just make sure that when you save changes, it remains after save. And if it does, you're in awesome shape. In fact, if you want to double check that it actually saved, come back over to the license keys page on the tribe site and refresh it. Notice that indeed that third slot is now filled in with the local host website. Since I am building this site locally, that represents my actual site. If I were doing this on a live site, I would see a real URL like WP Shindig or demo.tri.be. So if this were a regular premium add-on, you'd be set. You would have everything in place and you'd be ready to go. But Eventbrite tickets is a bit unique. Due to a limitation on the Eventbrite side, you do have to add an Eventbrite API user key to your profile in order for things to fully function. How do I do that? It's very easy. First thing you want to do is go over to the back end of your site, and this is not done in the settings panel in any way, so keep this in mind. The API key is added on a user by user basis. Anybody who wants to be able to import events from Eventbrite or send events to Eventbrite is going to have to have this key in their profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up into the Howdy Admin section, go to Edit My Profile, and I'll scroll to the very bottom of that where I see there is this Eventbrite User Account section. There's a field for the Eventbrite API user key, and I just need to figure out where do I get that. I get it over at eventbrite.com. You're going to want to create an account if you haven't already. It's free and it takes just a few minutes. And when you do, go into your account section. And within your account section, you will actually go to this area that says API user key. Copy that API user key in full. Go back over to the profile of your site. Plug it into the field. It's not going to validate, so you're just going to have to trust it. And then update profile. The profile's updated. If the Eventbrite API user key remains, you're in good shape. You're just going to want to verify it by taking this simple step of going over to events, going to add new, scrolling down, and making sure that the Eventbrite options are here and available. If they are, you are fully configured and can begin jumping into it by hitting yes here. We'll check that out in the next screencast. There's one more thing I want to walk through with you quickly, and it's over on the Tribe website. 
Let's say that you are moving your site, and so you built it in a localhost environment, but then you're going to move it over to the finished website. Let's say the finished website is tri.be. Would I then have to use up two slots in my license, one for the place where I built it, where I don't need it anymore, and a second for the actual finished product URL? Absolutely not. In that case, I would just come in here, hit this disconnect now button, click OK when prompted, let it unregister that key, and then come back down to make sure that it actually did remove it from the third slot. And then I'll go back over to the licenses section on my site and wipe it there as well. Once it's been removed in both locations, we know that that license is free for use on our finished product website. Last thing to keep in mind, sometimes people need to re-download the plugin. They lost the site, they had to rebuild the site from scratch, something went haywire, whatever. If you need to re-download the premium plugin that you've purchased, it's real easy to do here on the Tribe website. Come into Account Central, come into Downloads, and you'll see a link and information about every premium plugin that you currently have a valid license for. Notice, for example, Eventbrite Tickets is on this list. It shows the most recent version, which at the time this video is being recorded is 1.05, shows the day that was released, and it gives me a blue download button. All I'd have to do is hit that download button, it would download the zip file to my desktop, and I would be ready to install it. All right, through the administrative aspects, thanks for bearing with me. I'll see you in Screencast 2 for a bit more specific functionality.